Good evening and welcome to Pastor on the Porch, to my porch congregation this evening. I come to you a little bit early, a few minutes early tonight, because there is a very dark cloud headed right towards the porch. So I was uh, a little concerned about getting our time in this evening before whatever this dark cloud has in store for us to uh, happen to uh, get it in before it gets right over the top of us and we are washed out if that is in fact what this dark cloud is all about. So I come to you this the seventh day of September and every year about this time I think all of us start to think about September 11th in ways in which we have witnessed and also have seen and also have been present with a change in how we feel. I personally am not old enough to remember when Kennedy was assassinated or when Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. So my day of reckoning, so to speak, was where were you when September 11th happened? And ironically, and with a lot of thought process now that has happened, I was not far from Shanksville, Pennsylvania, actually. Um, At that time... Eric and I were living in a little town called Indiana, Pennsylvania, um, going to school, both enrolled at a, and my brother was enrolled at a school called Indiana University of Pennsylvania, a state school in the Pennsylvania system, while my stepdad was the associate dean of arts and sciences at that school, and I was standing, I can tell you exactly where I was that moment, much like the generation before me can tell you exactly where they were when they found out JFK was assassinated or MLK was assassinated. I was standing in the service writer's desk at a local Pontiac GMC dealership, Pontiac GMC Cadillac dealership in Indiana, Pennsylvania, watching the the Today Show. And on a big old TV that was hung from the ceiling in the customer lounge, but we could see it from the desk. And I remember watching that second plane go into the Twin Towers that day. And at that moment, realizing that I needed to call my wife, now wife, at that moment, realizing that I needed to check in with other family members, at that moment, realizing that the entire world and how we lived our world had changed in that moment. A moment that I will never forget as long as I live. Much like the moments that I explained earlier of MLK being assassinated or JFK being assassinated or other moments in our lives in which we never forget. But this moment touched us a little bit harder as Erica's brother, and father at the time were both in the armed services. Erica's father was in National Guard and brother was in the Army. And we knew things were going to change. We knew things would be different from then on. But I think what we didn't realize at that moment that we now realize 20, what are we at now? 2001 to 2022, 
21 years later, 20, yeah, 21 years later, is how much of our innocence would be lost. And that is what I want to speak about tonight, is our innocence lost. Before September 11th, 2001, there were not many things that fear, that made the whole population of the United States fear living. Following that event, many, many things churned to fear in our lives. Some for valid reason, others for invalid reason. Either way, we were not the same people as we were on September 10th as we were on September 12th. But the funny thing was, is on September 12th, and 13th and 14th and 15th and that week or so or two following this horrific event. We came together as a country. We came together as a country. It didn't matter where we worshiped. It didn't matter where we hung out. Didn't matter what political party we were in. Didn't matter what the color of our skin was. But that week or two following that horrific event, we were all Americans. We were all Americans in one battle against evil. Now, that evil, we didn't know exactly what it was. We didn't know who it was at the time. We had speculation. We had wonder. We had assumptions. But we didn't really know what that evil looked like until years later. That evil would be brought forth in so many different ways. That evil would escalate a war based on unfounded findings. That evil would bring forth lives lost for 20 years to come and plus. And that evil would continue in our society even today. This evil of hatred, this evil evil of segregation, this evil of the other, this evil of political mindset setting the tone for what it really looks to be an American. We're in a place in our world right now that is nothing like that of September 10th. And I can say that because I remember what it was like. There was not this divisity. There was not this huge hatred for others. There was not this solid working towards the other Instead, it was a place where we tolerated. And though toleration isn't the answer, we allowed others to think in other ways. We allowed others to think differently, and it was okay. We allowed others to understand things from a different angle. And it was okay. And yet, 
today we find ourselves in a place where we cannot find an equal ground, a middle ground, so to speak. A place in which we as individuals can agree to disagree. You have to be on one side or the other in whatever realm that finds ourselves in, whether it be political, whether it be racial, whether it be faith-based, whether it be whatever it is. We have found ourselves in a place in our hearts, our minds, and our souls that is not what the Lord has asked for. We have found ourselves instead in a place more like that of the Old Testament. For those that do not agree with us are exiled. For those that are, do not agree with what we think are persecuted, where those that do not agree with us are set aside. That is not the world that the Lord has asked for. And that's why Jesus was here on this earth to teach us that that is not what the Lord had asked for. Jesus taught us that it doesn't matter we are supposed to love. Skin color doesn't matter. We're supposed to love. Jesus teaches us male, female doesn't matter. We're supposed to love. Shunned by society doesn't matter. We're supposed to love. We are as a nation. In a place and in a time where change needs to happen. I'm afraid that that change, those feelings that so many felt for so many years were able to come out over these last few decades. In this last decade, particularly. This way of thinking that was always on the fringes was allowed to be vocalized. And not only vocalized in society, but vocalized in our faith traditions as well. When each of us sit back and look, at how society is affecting each and every one of us, I think we'll have a different look and different perspective on where the next steps are in our lives. But the problem is we forget to do that. We forget to understand that just because it doesn't fit with our particular situation doesn't mean that it doesn't fit with a different particular situation. Others are finding themselves and finding what they truly are and how God truly created them. And we as a people, we as a society, are choosing whether to accept those individuals or not. Just as we were choosing to accept those individuals on September 10th and September 12th, differently. I would say on September 10th, there was a criticism of certain populations that wasn't there on September 12th. But instead, on September 12th, 2001, a new criticism came. 
And no longer was it that of the criticism that was on September 10th. But in each and every one of these dates that I keep saying, there is a criticism or a critique of populations. Criticism or critique of populations continue today. We see it in our world today, our society today, each and every day that we as a population live. We are criticizing and critiquing others because of whatever. But in each of those moments, are we individually stopping, looking at ourselves in the mirror, and understanding where we come from versus where they come from? Where we come from versus how they are living? Are we living our true authentic lives as others are living their true authentic lives and as people have I don't want to use the word issues but I guess that's the best word issues with how others live out their true authentic lives what is that saying about us what is that saying to the Lord about us. That we think that we are better than them. Because I never saw anything about that in the scriptures. That we think that our lives. Function in a better universe than theirs. Because I don't ever remember Jesus talking about that instead what I recall Jesus preaching and Jesus teaching is that no matter who the other is we are called to love them we are called as Christ followers not only to love them But to go to them. To find out what we can do for them. To acknowledge them. To prove to the Lord that we are in society with them. In connection with them. In relationship with them. And them can mean so many things in our lives. I'll let you decide what is your them. But each of us is required by the mandate to look for them. The scripture we'll be discussing this week speaks of the one lost sheep and the 99 that are left behind. Go find that one lost sheep. Allow yourself to go find that one lost sheep. Allow yourself To seek out that one lost sheep. And allow yourself. To be the shepherd. That doesn't worry about what everybody else has got going on over here. But instead. Seeks out. That one. That we need to bring back. To the Lord. as I look out, that dark cloud that I spoke of that was headed this way has changed directions. And instead, 
a very faint rainbow is formed in the clouds, letting me know that the Holy Spirit is out there. The Holy Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit wants us as believers to understand the greatness and the powerful the ability to out of what I perceived as a problem or problematic situation instead brought beauty. So may we bring beauty to whatever situation we are involved in, whatever day we are, whatever time and space we are involved in that situation. So go forth knowing that you are one of God's children. And as God's children, you can bring beauty to a situation, no matter the darkness. So go in peace, but do not go to pieces. I love you all. See you Sunday. Or see you next week here on Pastor on the Porch. Good night.